Thank you, friends. It is uh, the weekend chat, and this is Pastor Larry at uh, Southwest Radio Church in Oklahoma City, and it is February the 1st, 2019. I hope you've not been caught in any blizzard or below zero weather. Uh, we've really missed all of that in Oklahoma. But you know, I want to talk about uh, something that I feel very strongly about, and I know many Christians feel very strongly about uh, it as well. You know, people cheer when they're really happy. Uh, I love to see people cheering at a ball game or maybe at a graduation. If uh, you've had a child who has uh, gotten a degree in, in college or high school diploma, uh, you cheer, you're happy about it. But you know, on January the 22nd, 2019, um, Governor Cuomo, uh, governor of New York, my home uh, state, uh, had signed a, a death warrant for many, many unborn babies. It was very, very uh, sad. And actually, they are now um, liable to abortion, to, to be aborted, at the moment of, of birth, during uh, the time of uh, dilation, actually. The implications of this uh, uh, is horrible. Uh, and there was a lot of shouting. There was a lot of celebrating. There was a lot of excitement. There was a lot of praise. There was a lot of applause. I was absolutely disgusted. Uh, here were people in the um, Senate chamber uh, who were rejoicing um, at the wanton destruction of human life. We've come so far. It's absolutely shocking to me. We are living today in a culture of death. Now, I want to say something about the culture of death. The culture of death is that culture that raises its fist in the face of Almighty God. And a part, a very important part of that culture of death, very evil, very wrong, very wicked, uh, and remember it's a part of the culture of death is the LGBT lifestyle. As a matter of fact, the very day uh, that uh, Governor Cuomo uh, signed that horrific uh, bill, the World Trade Center was lit up in pink. Okay, so, you know, there, there's a symbolism there that I see, and because of my uh, Christian worldview, I'm aware of it, but even those who put pink lights uh, on the World Trade Center, this... Uh, the World Trade Center was a building that was built in uh, rebellion against death, okay, against uh, jihadism of these fanatics who came. And so, in some sense, they felt liberated. They, they now could kill their babies. And they bathed that World Trade Center in pink, one of the favorite colors of the LGBT people. I think that's very, very revealing. You see, when we depart from the Word of God, when we uh, shake a fist in the very face of God, we are in the culture of death, okay? Either killing babies, killing marriage, destroying the God-given purpose of human sexuality between one man and one woman, this whole package, this whole culture of of death is, is shocking. So I really believe that we are descending into an unbelievable barbarism. The human race, um, it's not evolution, it's devolution. You know, the evolution is say we're evolving upward. I think we're devolving down into the pit. We are moving um, in the direction of um, death and mayhem. And, and suffering. Sarah Palin uh, made this uh, comment um, on that day. She said, those who never imagined society would actually get there, that is state government sanctioning infanticide, must logically understand what gets accepted next, death panels, death panels. You know, we're on the slippery slope. Whoever thought we would come this far I remember several years ago, President Clinton said this. He said, abortion should be legal, but rare. Well, it's legal, but it certainly ain't rare, okay? It, it's considered health care. Women are now clamoring. 
They know their rights to kill their baby. Wow, how far you have come in the wrong direction. You know, Planned Parenthood and the women who support it I keep on talking about, I want complete control over my body. Let me remind you of something. Jesus Christ surrendered complete control over his body so you and I and everyone who puts their faith in him could have eternal life. Where is that concept any longer of sacrifice? Where is that concept where we say, oh, it's not about me, it's about someone else, it's about my baby, it's about my husband, it's about my world, it's about some higher ideal. These women, these, and there are men involved as well, okay, these people are saying, I want complete control. The Son of God surrendered complete control over his body. He allowed evil, wicked people to come and nail him to the cross. And yet we have women today who are acting uh, very selfishly, very wickedly. You know, one of the remarkable things about the human race is that people are different from animals. Have you ever read a story, for example, of a man or a woman running into a burning building to save a baby? That's, that's called sacrificial living. Have you ever heard of a a man in a foxhole or a soldier who, because of his sacrificial love for his buddy, rolled on a hand grenade that two seconds later exploded and killed him. That's sacrificial living. And, yeah, and yet now people say, I want autonomy. I want my own will. I want to do my own thing. You know, the Bible makes it very clear that fallen man will try to reach a state of perfectibility on his own strength. Let me read one verse. It's from Genesis 6 and verse 5. It says this, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. You see, we don't become better through ritual. We don't become better through human autonomy. We don't reach perfectibility by doing our own thing. It's impossible according to the Word of God, and you know the Word of God is right. Even lost people realize that, wow, there's a lot of mean and evil people. Well, I can tell you why there's a lot of mean and evil people. Number one, we're all fallen sinners. Number two, those mean and evil people need to be saved, and if they're not saved, they don't accept Jesus Christ. If they are arrogant and proud and say, oh, I don't need salvation, guess what happens? We will have a lot of mean and arrogant people. In 1999, 1998, 1999, there was a Chicago nurse by the name of Jill Stanick. She worked at uh, Christ Hospital in Chicago, and she found uh, something that was quite shocking to her. She found little unborn babies or babies that had survived uh, abortion. Uh, they had been placed in a soiled utility closet. Well, she was shocked. These are little uh, babies, little human beings. They had been left there to die. And so she figured, well, since this is Christ Hospital, it's a Christian hospital. Probably the, the administrator, the people on the staff, they don't know about it. So she went and she spilled the beans, and she was a whistleblower. She got into a lot of trouble. This dear woman, because of her commitment to Jesus Christ, risked her job and her reputation, and she became a committed pro-life uh, supporter. She tells the story that uh, she found the little baby with the Down syndrome uh, who had been uh, survived abortion, and uh, she picked it up, wrapped it in a blanket, and, and, and it survived for about uh, 45 minutes. Well, at that time, uh, Barack Obama was a senator in um, the state of Illinois, and um, the state came up with the Born Alive Infant Protection Act. Guess what? 
it was vetoed by Senator Barack Obama, who later was voted President of the United States by many Americans. What a, what a sad, sad day that is, the culture of death. The Democrats have a good, good hand, a big stake in the culture of death. They're, they're behind this. And I hate to pick on one par party, but you know, at one time the Democrat Party was pretty sane. There were some good people in the Democratic Party. Now the Democratic Party um, is the party that's not only on the fringes, it's gone beyond the fringes. It's got socialism, it's got communists, it's got people of all stripes who um, are just very sad. And, and I'm very heartbroken that our, our country has to, has to deal with something like this. Well, what does the Bible say um, about the unborn baby. I want to look at a couple of scriptures because in the Bible, um, children are precious. In the Bible, uh, where God tells us uh, that um, uh, God is the creator, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, we read some unusual things that are very significant about human life. For example, Job. Um, he was very much under the gun, so to speak. And then in Job chapter 3, verse 1, it says, After this opened Job his mouth and cursed his day. And Job spake and said, Let the day perish wherein I was born, and the night in which it was said, There is a geber conceived. Now, what was conceived? A dog? No, it was a geber. What was conceived? A glob of protoplasm? No, it was a geber. What does the Hebrew word geber mean? Well, the King James translates it man-child. It means a male. A male baby was conceived. So in the Word of God, even at that moment of conception, the conceptus is a geber, a man-child. Let's go to another scripture. Let's go to Genesis chapter 25. Uh, Rebecca had uh, conceived, and uh, we read that, um, well, I'll read uh, verses 21 and 22 in Genesis chapter 25. It says, And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah his wife conceived. Now notice the next verse, verse 22. And the children struggled together within her. Jacob and Esau, yet unborn, they are called children. They struggled together within her. And then in Luke chapter 1, uh, we read that uh, Mary, uh, the mother of Jesus, visited Elizabeth, who is pregnant. I want to read verse 41 in Luke chapter 1, and it says, And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the brepho leaped in her womb. Now, what is a brepho? It's a baby. Okay, so here was this unborn child. It's called a baby. And then it says that Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Then if we uh, go down to verse 44, we read this. For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the brepho leaped in my womb for joy. We see several examples of how the Word of God considers the unborn uh, child, uh, a baby, a human being. Friends, liberalism is a dangerous, dangerous movement. It's anti-God. It's anti-respect for authority. It's anti-respect for the Word of God. It's made up of a lot of nasty, mean people like Maxine Waters. It's um, the kind of a movement that will destroy the family, will destroy the home, will destroy everything that is good in America. America is not perfect, but America has some unusual traits and characteristics and qualities about it that are very precious. And those of us in America who are born again Christian and who recognize the sanctity of human life, we're gonna stick with this, okay? We're not gonna give up on pushing the sanctity of human life. You can yell, you can shout, 
You can elect a Democrat president, man or woman, who wants to kill the unborn and endorse the LGBT movement. We're not going to put up with it. We're going to be around. And there's someone who's with us who's going to help us to find victory. It's Almighty God. I pray that as you look at my face and listen to my little uh, speech this afternoon, that you will realize that, yes, if you are a Christian, and yes, if you're saved, hey, that's great. But if you are one of the rebels, one of the angry people who's trying to fight God, you're in great trouble. And out of love for you, and out of the sense of responsibility that I have as a minister of the gospel, I implore you to be saved. Turn to Jesus. Allow the Holy Spirit to come into your life and to give you a new heart that you will come to see that all human life is special. May God bless you.